Right now, I'm headed to the famed Quaish Bar at the Craigellachie Hotel in Speyside, Scotland. <coughs> Though it's small in size, it has a world-renowned selection of different Scotch whiskeys. Scotch everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> I've met up with Gordon, who's sort of a Scottish Renaissance man, actor, history buff, and as luck would have it, a Scotch lover. So the name of this bar is the Quaish. This is a Quaish over here. It's a fairly large one. What's a Quaish? This? The, the silver bowl. This? Put your whiskey in it and you pass it around. That's what the two handles are for. It's just like a, a wee communal cup that you can shiny. pass around. Very, very shiny. Oh. We have around us some of the best selections of whiskey in Scotland. You want me to climb up there? You go ahead. You can climb up there. Where am I going? As we scan the room for a few choice samples, we catch the attention of some Scotch Crates visitors from Australia. I've got the capacity to become a Steve McKinnon. An Australian one, though, so a bit more charismatic. <laughs> oh, 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 would you oh, like oh, some? Oh, oh. Is that a dram? That's a German dram. That is a dram. <laughs> a dram, by the way, is Scottish lingo for a pour of scotch. Cheers. Jeez. The Scottish guy in the other corner says these Australians have it right when it comes to measuring a dram Scottish style. I mean, when you come into a house, you ask for one, two, three, or four fingers, but yeah. in Scotland, you ask for one finger. Yeah. That way. Yeah, okay. In honor of that, yeah, we're, we're bring on the dram. Oh, that's a dram. It's a man's dram. Thank you. Man's dram. Gentleman's dram. Thank you. All right, so are there more scotches here than anywhere else in the world? 659. 659. No, I, only drank, I only drank the 600 last night, right. but there's another 120 ones in on. Okay, 20 left. Okay. So I like to try each one. Okay, that's fine. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> so far, we've explored the way scotch is aged in different barrels and the various categories from single malts to blends. But Gordon says that there's another key factor that distinguishes one scotch from another, geography. The north, north of Scotland up here. West. West, east, east, and that country they call England down south. Ireland. OK. With our table as a makeshift map, we start with the familiar, Glenfiddich, which will act as sort of a benchmark for comparing the other regions. Slangevar. Good oh, health. Slangevar. Slangevar. Uh, uh, cheers, good. Cheers, good. Good health. Health, good. Good health. Is that right? That's right. Okay. Gordon says that Glenfiddich, like all the distilleries of Speyside, uses fresh mountain runoff water, giving it a velvety smoothness. For our next dram, we try something from the lowlands to the south, which uses a different type of water source. And this is just really rainwater in burns, as in rivers. No. Wow. That's got some kick to it. You're right, it does have a kick, doesn't it? It does. It's, it's, it ta <laughs> tastes more. I don't want to. Still taste it after. I get it tastes boozy. I'm not boozy, but it's got a. You can taste the alcohol. Mm -hmm. It's not as mellow as this one. Next, we try scotch from the west. Over to Isla. Okay. It's very peaty over there. And peat is when um, all of the trees and the foliage has broken down and gone to compost and just lies on the top of the ground. So this one is uh, peaty. So this is very peaty. Meaning, the, meaning very, the water comes through the peat. The water falls as rain and soaks itself through the peat. That is interesting. It's definitely got more, more of the peaty, more of the, the, the smoky, the smoky yeah. taste to it. It's waterier. Does that make any sense? Do you know what I'm talking about? Funnily enough, it's almost like it's missing something. Yes. So, we agree. Good. Next, we try scotch made in the northwest, where mountain spring water is used. This is from the island of Skye. This is the island of Skye, where they get their water from? From the mountains. Oh. It's, it's mountain spring water, basically. Man, that's got a kick to it. Mm -hmm. It's very um, sharp. Finally, Gordon wants me to try scotch from the far north, where the water comes from deep artesian wells. We go up to Orkney, so the water is very, very they pure. They have wells that go 3,000 feet? Yes, yeah, just an art, like an artesian bore. It's pretty good. It's, it's, it's pretty smoky. Yeah, I kicked that one up. These ones are very, this one's very similar, I, I find, as are these two. You know, again, these are all, all my opinions. It's, it's mm -hmm. basically what you like. If, I might think this is too sharp, but sharpness may be what you're looking for. Me? No, I like mellow. I'm cool. <laughs> are, those, are those the bad bottles? Why are those in jail? 
This is a whiskey club. And they, and and they lock their bottles in here? They lock their bottles in there so they can either come here and they can have one of these special reserved bottles or even if their friends came here. So if you have friends coming here from Three Sheets, they can come here and say, hey, I'm a friend of Zane, so I want to nip out of his bottle. How much does it cost to be in this club? About $1,000, 500 pounds. 500 pounds to be in this club? In this club, plus the cost of the bottle. OK, it's time to dig into the massive Three Sheets production budget and give you, the viewer, a chance to have a drink on me. I like to put a, the Glenn Fitter 18 in here. You're number five. I'm number five? Yep. You heard it here first, drams for fans at the Quaish Bar. This offer is only valid at participating Quaish Bars for as long as three sheets can afford to keep a full bottle behind the cage. And then the people, they're going to come here and say, I'm a friend of Zane's. And and then they get to they get to take a dram from, from my, my sure, bottle. Sure, no problem. We'll see you here. And I'll be here waiting for you. So will I. And Gordon. <laughs>